So my name is uh, Kamel Haddad. I'm originally Lebanese from Lebanon. Uh, I left Lebanon at age 18. Uh, that was a time when Lebanon was going through a civil war, uh, and there was a brain drain during that time, I guess. Uh, it was a matter of survival for me to continue my education. I had to come to the United States. Uh, my uncle had graduated uh, from Georgia Tech, and so I went there, and um, it was amazing that they took me. It was a good, good time there, and they said, we'll accept you on probation if you do well. I did well. Uh, I got my bachelor's in, in applied math from Georgia Tech and then my graduate degree from Maryland in mathematics. I moved up the ranks. Uh, my first job was in the California State University system as a mathematician, professor. Moved up the ranks there, took the chair position of math and then an associate dean position there. Then moved to Cal State San Marcos as a vice provost. Um, had a short stint as interim provost, then came here to Colorado, where my wife's from. Uh, to NHS. Now I'm the Dean of the College of National Health Sciences uh, at UNC and honestly my favorite job so far. It'll be two and a half years since I've been in this position. It'll be three in May. Uh, you, uh, UNC is a fantastic uh, university and both my past experience and my interests matched the priorities of this university. Uh, namely, the student first priority is is very much uh, resonates with me very much, uh, and the um, teacher scholar model of the faculty member also resonates with me. This is basically the model where the faculty's research and teaching are both important, and one infuses the other, and the other informs the first. Right. So, uh, so this is to me extremely important because the role of the university, in my opinion, is a place where two things are prioritized. One is the pursuit of knowledge, and that's in the form of research. And one is the, in the dissemination of knowledge, and that's in the form of teaching. Uh, so both of these things are very important. And both NHS and UNC epitomize these priorities. Uh, so I found a home for me here, uh, and I just love it. I grew up with mathematics in the home. Uh, my mother is now a retired, she was a middle school math teacher. My father uh, taught high school math and chemistry. Uh, and I remember growing up, coming back from school and sitting at the, uh, at the dinner table doing my homework while my parents were giving pri private lessons at the same time in the same room. Uh, and so mathematics and teaching mathematics is very much something that I grew up with. Uh, I remember when I was 12 and 13, I would get so much joy from helping my mom grade uh, her uh, students' quizzes, you know, so she would give me the, <laughs> you know, so she would, she would give me the rubric, and and I would grade. Of course, she would watch over me, but you know, I took a lot of pleasure doing that. My very first job, I think I was sixteen, then is private tutoring as well. So I private tutored uh, my sister's friends who were struggling in math. She was three years younger than me, and I just loved it. Uh, math was. The first subject that I did my homework in, you know, I'd come back from school and I would have a set of homework like every kid. And it was often the case that I would do my math homework and stop and I wouldn't do any other, <laughs> any other homework. It was, uh, it was really in my blood. So uh, then I, you know, so it was a natural thing for me to want to study, uh, which I did. I have another interest uh, and I've always had it in theater and acting. If it had not been math, it would have been acting. But I remember my father saying, you know, uh, acting is great, but he was not confident that it would be a career that that would, you know, give me enough money to, to be a provider. So he said, why don't you do that as a pastime? I did, uh, and I still act a little bit on the side. Another thing that's interesting to me are roles that have uh, social meaning uh, that makes the audience think about something that matters to them in life. And it could be relationship, for example. Whether it's a relationship between two lovers or between two family members, a father and a daughter, a man and his brother. Uh, is there anything that is happening in that scene or in that play that's gonna bring it back home to you and have something socially meaningful to you as a result of seeing that play. And it could be a, something that is meaningful to a private relationship, or it could be something that is meaningful 
in society. Uh, an issue that is important in society right now that this play addresses makes you think as an audience member about that societal issue perhaps in a way that you may not have thought of before so to me theater it really is intended to do these things and and i am attracted to roles that have that flavor you know so what i like about mathematics is that uh, unlike other scientists it's not about whether the hypothesis makes sense or not, but it's rather whether the set of hypotheses that you accept, what kind of truths they lead to. And I like that construct because then you're not, you don't feel like you're in the search, in the search for absolute truth. Instead, you're in a search of what can you conclude given a certain set of hypotheses. I'm also an avid. Uh, card player, so I play bridge and poker. I'm a la life master in bridge. I started bridge when I was 10. Rem remember I said that, you know, I grew up in the Civil War, and during the Civil War, but by 7 o'clock, there was curfew, there was no electricity, no TV, therefore no water. And so we uh, we had to to play games, basically, to survive and, and bond as a family. And so I learned to play bridge at that time because uh, my parents and a friend of my parents needed a fourth, and then I was it. So they taught me and I've been playing ever since. I love it. Yeah, I'd love to say, I'd love to talk about this because gaming, playing games, whether it's uh, active or not, is really important for me. I'm a huge gamer. And by gamer, I don't mean computer games. I really mean any game. Uh, for a couple of reasons, I think, when I reflect back. The first thing is bonding with other people. So growing up in Lebanon and, and, and playing with my parents and my sister and with my neighbors when they came up, uh, help us build a relationship. Uh, getting to know people through playing a game is special. Uh, you laugh, you compete, uh, you know, you get to know the person through a, through a game. Um, and so developing relationships uh, definitely was one of the positive rewards from that when I was growing up. As far as active games, uh, in other words, sports or, or other things that are active, uh, hiking, being in nature, I really believe in the adage that it's a healthy mind and a healthy body. Uh, creating these endorphins gives you more energy in a sense, you know, and it's really true. I find that I have more energy in the end of the day if I actually did something active in the morning. I get tired earlier if I don't do anything active. So it's interesting in that activity leads to more energy and gets me to have more to give. And, and, and finally, I also find that activity also reduces stress. And when your stress is reduced, your ailments are reduced. The medical field will tell you that there's a direct correlation between ailments and stress. And if you can find a way to reduce that stress, then you lead a healthier life. Uh, so, I cannot say enough about the importance of both active and, and cerebral pursuits of recreation, leisure, and gaming. Huge advocate. And spirituality is important to everybody. And people um, achieve that outlet, that spiritual outlet in different ways, right? So some people achieve it in place of worship, uh, you know, in a, in a church, a mosque, a synagogue, and that's where that outlet comes in. So for me, it's not quite there, but, but more so in, in theater. When I am performing, uh, that's where I feel that, that's, that's the place where my spirituality is released. Uh, and that's important. In the sciences, you don't get to do that often, especially in mathematics, because mathematics is so structured, right? You're making an argument, you're constructing a proof. Um, that's not where the, my spirituality comes out. But, but on stage, I feel like it does. So it's, yeah, it's, uh, it's important for me. You know, I, I think that these things, yeah, I mean, I think these things are complementary, right? 
structure, uh, especially for somebody in the sciences, right? And not all of our audience members are going to be scientists. But if there is structure in your life, sometimes structure works because it's it's uh, it's disjointed from spirituality. Uh, but I think that to, to live a, a healthy and balanced life, you need to find an outlet for both of these things at the same time. You don't want to do it overdo it here and you don't want to overdo it here. Uh, so that healthy balance is important. And the challenge is to be able to find where each lies. Um, you know, if it is, you know, science and theater, in my case, it could be something different in somebody else's case. Somebody else's case, it could be if they're an accountant, you know, it could be accounting and hiking, for example. For many people, being in nature is a spiritual thing. When you're walking by a river and you listen to the stream and you look at the trees, that's that's where their sp spirituality comes out or that's where it's satisfied. That can be it for them. Uh, I think finding that balance is is where I would go with that question. Thanks for watching another episode of Wreck Yourself. I'm your host, James Gould. I'm a professor of tourism management at the University of Northern Colorado. I hope we've inspired you to explore. And of course, feel free to check out the links below for specific information on recreation resources, our guests, and our partners. Also, be sure to hit like and subscribe. Until we see you next time, be sure to wreck yourself.